The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Chapman. Good morning, everyone. Basil Chapman. Just uh, always having these sudden things happen here technically, but I think we're good. Uh, the Dow is up 215 on this Friday, the 13th of October. Uh, very pleasant surprise that we've started this leg B in the Chapman wave, but that 200 period moving average. See this orange line right here? That is formidable resistance. We went above it uh, earlier on. We went to 33,957. Now we're at 33,839. Uh, that's quite a bit of a pullback, but still pretty pretty good. The S&P, I'm going to do this with one hand, <laughs> S&P right now is up 14 at 4363.91. Now, why did I lose that page? Ah, oh, it just drives me completely bad as... All right, so we got, we got that up 14, got repelled at the 14-period moving average, hasn't yet made a leg B. That's very interesting. Oh, it did it by a fraction of a point yesterday. So um, the weekly chart has still got that S, and this is a Friday. That means that the 9-period is under the 14. We're going to have to watch this uh, very closely, which is one of the reasons why I've considered that this is really more a, um, a, a very serious bounce in the market, look at the look at the semi look at the QQQ rallying up to the two hundred to the two uh, Chapman Wave inside track repellent zone. It went yesterday to three seventy four, uh, three seventy three point seventy four, and today it is down fifty two cents at three sixty nine. Of course, the banks are already helping the Dow. Well, J P Morgan is helping the Dow, uh, but look at that, and it's the same thing with the SMH, the semiconductor index. Look at this. Down one at 151.19, got repelled right at the chapter. We've inside track repellent zone. This is the leg C so far, and we're looking at the IWM, the Russell 2000. You see what it's doing? Oh, down 32 cents today, 171. Now, what's absolutely intriguing is that the gold contract, there we go, gold, is up $42 at 1925. <clears throat> this is kind of what I was anticipating. Earlier on, and then it didn't happen. We had some good candles after the initial gap up on the uh, was it Monday, the ninth. Uh, that was Friday. Yeah, Monday uh, kept making higher highs and higher lows, and today it spiraled up. It went to 1932, and now it's trading at 1924, holding the gains very well. Um, now it's so fascinating. I'll do this um, in a. I'll do it right now. Look, if you go to Newmont Mining, it's one of the standard classics in the gold, uh, in the gold, in, in the whole sector itself. Um, a very nice move from a low of just under 34 to a 39, 32 right now. But look at that weekly chart. Lower lows and lower highs, and even with a spectacular six or seven day rally, it's nothing. And look at the monthly chart. Beautiful left side, right side price time match. At 33 was the round number low back in 2020. This is on a monthly chart. It's very unusual to get round numbers. It's purely coincidence, of course, but it's still unusual. And here we are, uh, having almost tested it uh, at the 30, 35 range, uh, 34. That is, let me give you the exact price. It was 34.61, and it's a green candle in the monthly chart. It was still quite a bit of the month to go, half a month to go. So we're going to be watching that. And then you've got stocks like um, in the silver area, past Pan American Silver, had a horrible session yesterday and gaps up today. Uh, but even if you're looking at the weekly chart, this is not great action. And I would have to say to you that it's the fear factor that's really moving some of the goals. And if you look at the GDX, not look, looking very good yesterday, but a very nice move up to $1.04 today to 28.78. But look at that monthly chart, uh, the weekly chart and the monthly chart. Nothing to see there, folks, just yet. But this is in play. There's no question that now with the, with the war going on in the Middle East, 
you've got to be, consider that gold is where money tends to flow, especially when it's the Middle East uh, in a situation like this. And if you're looking at uh, silver, silver, that's the continuous contract, really nice candle today, but the nine is still weak under the 14-period moving average, but it has taken out, oh, it's just about to take out this longer-term trend line from the beginning of September. It needs to get to 2320. It's at 22.68 right now, uh, up 0.72. That's the silver contract. Let's go to uh, the TLT. This is amazing. Look at this. Horrible, horrible, horrible. Has a terrible day yesterday, and then suddenly it's up $1.55 at 87.64. But if you're looking at the daily chart, the weekly chart, and the monthly chart, there is so much that has to happen to the uh, TLT, to bonds, to be able to say that we've turned the corner and that yields are going to go lower as the bonds go higher. Uh, it's a work in process, but uh, all I can say is um, it doesn't look too good right now. So, um, as I said, I'm using this one hand because the other hand's holding the old-fashioned, it's called a telephone with a, with a cable, with a wire. Um, meantime, back at the ranch, what we're looking at is that the dollar, I wonder if it's given up any of those earlier gains. The dollar is... Uh, unchanged at 106.56. So I spoke about this inside track repellent zone. It was a propellant zone. It was, then it became a repellent zone for a couple of days. And now we've moved above that line. And that reminds me of the SMHs. Look at this, the way the SMHs, semiconductors, went right up into the inside track, formerly propellant zone, then became a repellent zone. And now it's just stuck there. So this is a very complex moment that we're looking at right now. You're starting to see, the, you're starting to see at least from my, from my perspective, I want to see the XLF, which is the S&P Financial Spider Fund, um, at this point at 33.43, up 29 cents. I want to see it with Bank of America and many of the other uh, uh, financials pushing sharply higher. I want to see it closer to 34.30. Then 3340, um, and then I'm going to say, okay, save the day, right, the, right, the last moment, because we were just about to break under 32. That would have been terrible, because that's the 200 period moving average of the weekly chart. So we're going to be following this very closely. Meantime, back at the ranch, I wanted to show you what crude oil has done, and crude oil had a really sharp overnight move. It's still up almost three points at 85, 84. Look at the chart. The chart says it's, it's actually struggling. If you look at the weekly chart, if it closes right here, that peak D says we're very close to a sell signal, but we haven't got it. And with this whole Middle East conflagration, I don't see crude oil dropping very sharply. I think it's in play because, obviously, uh, it's a kind of a, a leverage for many of the players in the oil market. Uh, this is in play. And uh, no, uh, JB, I didn't see a low trend, uh, sh a shabby wave low trend gauge today. It's just a standard. Uh, it's nothing, nothing unusual there. So with that said, I'm expecting Raytheon. Raytheon uh, is up in leg B, but it doesn't look very good. Oh, there are so many things here that are not normal. I'll be back in a moment. Basil Trap, in fact, I'm going to try to... Uh, uh, Download everything. We, uh, I'll be back. Have, have patience and I'll be back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. 
The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible to most people. They think it's too volatile and risky. Most people aren't going to take the time to educate themselves on how to do it right. But you're not most people, are you? At TFNN, you'll get the guidance you need to refine your strategies and techniques to invest like a pro. Because you'll be a pro. All TFNN subscriptions, books, software, and courses are available at TFNN.com. And I'm even going to tell you how to get them for less. Use TFNN's Tiger Dollars and you'll get up to a 20% bonus on your purchase. And once you apply them to your account, Tiger Dollars are automatically used for all future or recurring charges. Tiger Dollars also never expire, are fully transferable, and are a great way to add savings to your newsletters or services. Become the investor you were born to be at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi folks, we're back, Basil Chapman, Tiger Technicians Hour, and everything's working again. Well, I haven't got the left side chart. Um, why is it that not working? Oh, I know, I like to have that up. Why is it gone? Uh, let me just see if I can do this. Reason this side. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to mess with that at this point. All right, so let's just do this. I've got the Dow up 143. Um, oh, I had all those charts. Let me see if I can get this going here. So just a, a real quick review. S&P is what, 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 not action. Command line error. Okay, okay. Whatever it is, I'm not going to fight with you. Don't want to lose that information. There we go. S&P is now only up nine. The QQQ was a little weaker before. Now it's weaker again. It's down 51 cents. IWM, I just want to do a quick review. Whoa, horrible chart. Down uh, 30 cents. Now let's get to um, gold. Is gold pulling back now? No, gold, gold's getting stronger. Okay. 
So I wanted to just do that to, to refresh for myself because my left side screen, I've got uh, three screens here, I've got a couple of screens and different computers, but that left side screen I'm not getting and I don't want to take a chance by putting in uh, recent workspaces because it's going to go to the wrong place and then mess me up completely. So within this context, let me do this. Um, let me see if there are any questions here. First of all, mm, close, close, no. Uh, and let me just do a quick review of where where, where we are, what we're looking at for uh, subscribers to my opening call. Am I, um, yes, I need to go here. <laughs> Give me a second. I've got Tiger Chat. That's what I'm looking for. Okay, Tiger Chat. Any questions that I had? I might have lost them. I'll try to review. I'll go back. Um, oh, Eli Lilly. Okay, let's just do Lilly. Lilly had a nice rebound, and now it's made a leg E, and it's a red candle, a leg D in the weekly chart, and a G slash C in the monthly chart. Now, I had mentioned... Uh, sometime uh, the other I think it was about four sessions ago that I had missed the entry point the perfect entry point for a rebound and all I would consider it to be would be a rebound towards the high that was made at 601.84 but you could start a split position but only with a small position here because it would only be a trade now we've got your leg in you see the way the stochastics at 92% if by Thursday or Friday of next week, that stochastic has fallen underneath 80%, then you've got to be really careful because then Eli Lilly, LLY is the symbol, at uh, 606 down 385, will be coming back quite sharply and could probably come back to the 573 to the 560 level. If it holds very well, and by, I'm going to make it as soon as, Monday afternoon or Tuesday, it has not. I'm not telling you where it can go to the upside. I'm telling you where it can go to the downside. If it has not taken out uh, five, I've got to go to that candle's opening price, 596. So 10 points lower. If it hasn't taken out the 596 level and is holding quite well, then that that second position is not going to come in because remember I said split. But I would just stay with that first position, try to garner as much as you can on the upside. But I do think at some point with it, on, on everything that I'm looking at on a visual basis, you see this expanding cone formation to the upside? Look, here we are. I see beautiful trend line. Let me just do it the way I would normally do it. Don't rush this. Take it from there to there. Look at that. This is the chapter wave inside track repellent zone. I'll make it green on the outside, red on the inside. Right there. Right there. Okay, that's the, I don't have to do the other one. I just, other than to say to you, normally I would look at this and say, this is the exact opposite of the expanding downside cone that we look at um, with the falling axe formation. So what we would be looking at here is if there is a slide over the next two weeks, I, it would not surprise me if this area right here, the middle, and that takes me right to where I was talking about, the, the 596, maybe even 590 area, does get tested on Eli Lilly. That was the one question. Uh, next question was, no, it's more a statement. And the statement is, how come the dollar is up and gold is up? You remember, I'll, I'll try to re, uh, rephrase this or at least re-articulate my thoughts. I would say, what are we now? We're in October. It was over a year ago. I remember it was the summer of last year. I said, what, what, everything's topsy-turvy. What was blue is now yellow. What was pink is now orange. Things have changed. In other words, my my little uh, five icon expression of Bondi, Crudy, Dolly, Goldie, and Vixie, their, their normalities have changed completely. 
that when the dollar went up, it used to be that when the dollar went down, crude oil came down. Came down. When the dollar went up, gold went down. When the, when gold was running sharply, the, the market has to be looked at as inflationary to the extent that very often you got the market moving as well. All of those are out, the VIX index, everything is out the window. Gosh, I wish I had that left side chart. It has all these things I'm talking about just in one panel, in, in one window. So in that context, what we're looking at here is that the dollar has to do with the currency internationally, the currency, the premier currency. And that's the reason why we remain wrong. That's the reason why I've said to you that the 107.35 high of the third, we pulled back for about eight or nine bars, and yet the uh, the nine period moving average is still very strong in the daily and the weekly and the monthly. I'll be back because look at crude oil. I mean, look at gold. It's a different thing. This has to do with war and and I'll be back. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30 plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen, as well as many more. And he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30 year T-bonds as they both influence Forex markets tremendously. When you sign up for the Tiger Forex report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60 minute webinar archive. He just hosted Forex strategies and fundamentals. What is behind the Tiger Forex report? For all the details and to start your 30 day Tiger Forex report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Hi, folks. So I, I'm, I'm not able to just check on all my emails right now. I still don't have, I, I, get, I think I might have lost the one that goes to my TFNN account on one of my computers. So the other's a little, a little slow. But in the meantime, let me just do a couple of things here. So you see this gold spike to the upside. Have a look at this chart. So this is Technical Friday. I'm going to do some of this uh, based on Chapman Wave methodology. I did get my chart on the left back again. Look at this green candle. 
We had a green candle like this back in a uh, huge candle. This is back in May, I think it was. March, I'm sorry, I think it was March. Let me give you the exact date. March the 17th. This is a week of March the 17th. That's a weekly chart. So I'd like to maybe, uh, wait, why is that a weekly chart? Because I pressed on the weekly chart. I want the daily chart. The daily chart, that's what I want. So this candle, it's one of the biggest candles I have seen in a long time. We had something similar to that way back in um, the 17th of March. Oh, that is the start of that particular candle. Um, and if you think about it, and then what happened is you made a little doji candle the following session, pulled back, and then it went sideways, and then made nominal new highs, but it did eventually go from the high that was made on this particular candle on the 17th of, of 2068. It did go all the way to 2140, was it? Yeah, 2143. Peak D, doji care. Remember, we're always looking for Ds and Es. There's a D, there's an E, turn around there. That was an E, D. Two bars later, it went up into the E. And here's a peak D. Uh, that was a peak E. <coughs> Got to get my sneeze out the way. And this is new, a brand new gray leg A. The power of the first move in a leg A uh, says, you've got to watch this closely because either this is just an aberrational thing, some kind of a spooky stuff that goes on and then it just diminishes. I don't think so. I don't think this is a one-off or a two-day thing out there in Gaza and with Hamas. I just, no, I don't think so at all. So I need to keep this in focus and say, hey, if the gold stocks start to move, and some of them have moved dramatically in just a, a week, and others are actually, as I said before, others are just kind of ho-hum. Uh, Newmont Mining is one of those that moved very nicely. Um, G-O-L-D, G-O-L-D has moved pretty well from the uh, 13 area to the, to the 15s, uh, but you, this is all not in quite in proportion to what you would expect under these conditions. So, in fact, without this, whatever's going on in the uh, mid, Middle East, you would probably see gold coming down even further. So we've got to keep that in mind. Now, let me just do this here. So the dollar, the question came up, why is the dollar rallying? Uh, and, and gold is two separate things, and I've been saying that for a year, over a year, that you've got to treat Every single aspect of this market separately, the the, uni, the unified scrabble board that you had before, or I shouldn't say scrabble board, let's say chess board, is very different today. Um, you've got, even when you've seen that, even within a sector, you've got some stocks that are doing fabulous in some, in the same sector, just ignoring what's going on. So I, I've I have to respect that. Now, I need to just draw this in, this technical Friday. So this is a the pattern that I always look at that's called you know, the falling axe formation. Why? Because it, it looks like an axe. You've got the handle that goes up. Let me just find my chart. Of course, I haven't got it up. I'll get it up right now. So this is the pattern that we always look at. And you make lower highs and much lower lows. And then all of a sudden, it finds uh, some footing and reverses up. So let me just pull, drag this across. Yeah, so you go up, 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 usually at a D or an E, you start to pull back sharply. Look, this is, I, I, I had it, but I took it away because it was starting to look messy. Right here, that's the falling axe formation. Why? Because it looks like an axe. I like to use things that are visually as uh, accurate as they are. Look, goes up, makes low highs, much lower lows, suddenly find support and it takes out that trend line. When it takes out that trend line and the technicals improve, it can then turn into a cup or a V-shaped formation to the upside and go all the way back to the previous high. Well, it did that right there. It did that right there. It did that right there. It did that right here. It's a fantastic pattern if you can recognize it because it just gives you a sense of consolidation, breather, back up, breather, up. And this is what we're looking at right now. This one's different. Why? Because the technicals are way weaker. Even though the nine's over the 14, the MACD's very weak, the casting's very weak. This is the dollar in the daily. But look at the weekly chart. The weekly chart is still hanging in there. 
I've got this as leg B. In the Chapman wave methodology, what we're looking for is if you get a buy signal to buy mode and everything about this in the weekly chart says it could fail, but I have to call this a buy mode. That's the reason why we're looking at this bifurcation that you've got what normally would be the dollar going up, gold going down. At this point, the dollar is actually uh, unchanged. But the gold is hugely up, but they're two separate things. They have different, um, uh, they have influences. So the, the things that's influencing the dollar is the very same thing that's happening gold, but for very different reasons. One is the whole aspect of the, of the lead currency for international, international trade. Remember, dollar, the dollar and bonds are huge volumes uh, internationally much bigger than stock markets. And gold is very important. It has its flash that when it's on fire, it's usually for a nervousness reason. So let's just do this. I wanted to show you the EUR, USD. I am skipping a whole bunch of stuff that I've written down to do today because the, the move that we're seeing in gold says you've got to be aware that there are considerations outside the normal market parameters that could impact our stock markets. That's our meaning the Western stock markets um, negatively at some point, because if this continues, at some point you're going to get a lot of nervousness about what's going to happen economically. So when you're looking at the euro, look at this down the way down. This is a horrible, it, it took out the left side low. Even as we're speaking, it's below that left side low in the euro in the weekly chart, and the monthly chart has got this arch formation. So the euro is not showing the kind of strength that you would expect if uh, things are turning around for USD JPY, the, the, the match between the dollar's trajectory to the upside and the US dollar Japanese yen currency pair, the yen's trajectory to the upside. This is making a cup formation. It is down 0.13 at 149.67 today, getting to an area of resistance, just as the dollar was getting to an area. We mentioned that the dollar was getting to an area of resistance, but it is leg D, probably a peak D in the weekly chart. But look at this. This is the Chapman Wave large rectangle formation. So I said today we talked about, a little bit about rectangles. Here's the large rectangle formation, and this large rectangle formation is saying that we should go to just under, right on, or just above the previous high in the yen. And that was back in, was it July? That was October of 2022 at 151.94, and we're at 149.66. Very close. I'll be back. Dow's up 162. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. 
Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Hi, folks. I just want to show you this. Uh, I know it's uh, in the Den Jungle I had mentioned. S-A-R-K. S-A-R-K is the, let me just type this in, is the inverse of the A-R-K-K, which is Kathy Wood. It's her uh, fund, ARK Innovation ETF. Just, I mean, people talk about a five-year return. Well, back in 2021, that was in November. So it's almost two years ago. It was at 125.86. <clears throat> it went down to 29, right up to 50. That's a pretty decent balance, but now it's back to 37. So, I yes, I, I think that this is still looking weak, and that's the reason why I said to subscribers, we're going to avoid some of these areas that I really want to get into a little later, maybe a little later in the year, where the, the lag is in the IWM, that's the Russell 2000, or ARKK, which has things like uh, 3D systems, et cetera, uh, Shopify. I, I, I'm interested in it, but not now, not at this particular point. And that's why we, we went long on a very short-term trading basis, the three times long um, a small position in the three times long QQQ, as well as three times long a Dow, I'm treating these as trades. We've still got our short position for the Dow August the 1st at the exact high, and the SMH is two points off the exact the all-time high, um, and that was also 1st or 2nd of uh, October. So what we're looking at here is I'm still of the camp that says a lot of work has to be done before we can make the kind of base that says this is the low for a, for a multi-week rally. Not just a bounce, and that's I think we're in the bounce phase. Could be completely wrong. That's the reason why I'm quite prepared that at some point we will switch from three times long to uh, we actually are long the diamonds in the long term from October uh, of last year to just adding to that position rather than have something as risky as or as something that degrades every single day at the end of the day, like the three times long um, UDOW. Actually, which we still have a position from October of last year together with the diamonds. But all I'm saying, this I'm treating as a trade. And you can see why it's necessary because this, even this arc, which would be a really good harbinger when it's trading, I don't know what the price would be, but I would just say the 200 period moving average right now is at 42. If this starts to trade for two or three weeks above 44, 50, 45, oh, that's going to be a different thing altogether. But it hasn't got there. It's not even close. So that's a, and a question came in. Could I look at Nike? Nike is um, trading right now. And just up. Okay. Nike is trading up 72 cents at 99.95. A huge gap from the low. It's very, it's very unusual to have this kind of gap from a multi year low. And this went right down. From the 112-ish area, it slides all the way down to 88.68, uh, 66, on the 28th of 
September, the very next day, I think it was earnings, comes out fabulous gap up. So the gap low is 94, and the gap high of the day before was um, 89.78. That's a huge gap, and it's taken one, it went one day, underneath it, closed just a fraction underneath it. That's usually not a good sign. But then it started walking the 14 period moving average, the nine cross positive, and here it is at 99. I think this is a very good sign in the shorter term for Nike, but it doesn't negate the fact that the tacticals need so much work. If it closes under 95 at any point in the next week and a half, now I'm going to go all the way through October. If at any time in October closes under 90, no, 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 has to be soon. If next week it closes under 90, 95, 19, yep, under 95, that's going to say, uh-oh, be careful because it could even fill the gap. But if it takes two and a half weeks or more getting to the end of October to actually do that, that says, you know what, N Nike's turning the corner, and that's a very important thing. Oh, the 120-minute chart. Yeah, I am talking monthly and yearly, and you want to get to the 120-minute chart? Uh, this is a big spike. This is a single leg A, and then it pulls back, and this becomes, let me do it live. It is Tiger Technician's Hour Friday, where we do technical Friday on the Chapman Wave methodology. So that's an A. That's a B. I'll look at your question in a minute. I'm just doing this. D, E. And then it goes F. G slash C, and that becomes D, and that becomes E. That's the way I've got it right now. Um, and what is your question? Oh, we did have a peak G, but you remember, this is your kickoff. So every peak has to be in the chapter. Wait, this is your obligation, just, just to count each successively higher peak. So this is an A. It pulled back, didn't take out the initial starting point, so that's still an A. That's an A. Oh, wait, that's an A and a B. That's an A. That's a B. I just chose to do it from here. And that becomes A, B, by a fraction C, D, I believe. I don't want to do things arbitrarily. That high was 96.05, 11.30 on the uh, 3rd of October. 96.05, and that is 96, oops, 95.99. Oops. Oh, it was being covered. Sorry. Sorry, sorry, sorry. That is the C, and that is the D. Right there. And that is the D. And now we've got E, F, G, and today we made G, S, C goes to D. It's the same thing. So let me just do this here, yeah, get rid of it. So this is E. <clears throat> Right, so this is F slash B, uh, F slash B, this is G slash C, remember G slash C, always be prepared that a G slash C can go to a D, and here's your D, there's never an H, so the next letter will be, if you've got an alternative count, D. I hope that's... Uh, that makes it clear. You know, you, you might have a slightly different count because it's the 120-minute chart, and where they start, the 120-minute chart makes a difference. So, um, thanks. Basil, I added to Nike puts yesterday um, near the high expected pullback. Um, uh, I, don't, I think we're going to disagree on this. I think there's just enough strength in Nike right now in the daily chart. Look, A... Uppercase on the way up. This is an A right here. Look at this. Maybe it's not. Uh, 28, 26 to 23. Yeah, this is. Look. And you do this enough times, you get to identify these things quite clearly. This is a B and that's a C. Um, I think there's just a little more room to go. But if they put, uh, you're talking about puts on a weekly basis, yes. 
If you're talking about next Friday, I think you will see a pullback in Nike. But so far, everything's very good. I actually wouldn't have taken the step to get the puts just yet. I'd actually wait a little bit longer. Look, even now the Dow's give back but Nike is holding 71 cents. All right, I'll be back in a moment with some questions that I'll answer in the final question. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFM. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Hi folks, I'm so sorry, I wasn't able to do this live. I, I love doing it, I was so busy with all this stuff. Look at that beautiful reversal at peak E in the... Uh, Five minute chart, even though the uh, 10 minute went to a C, it's really unusual to fail at a C and not a D or higher um, in the uh, 10 minute chart. But that's because also the, the 10 o'clock news that we started to tumble. So, this is, uh, I'll do this real quickly. What I'm looking at here is that, and one of the reasons why I've called this a short term trade for us going along, even though we've kept our core short positions, is that I want you to see three things. Number one, is I wanted to see how we close today, being Friday, because look, the S&P, and no, this wasn't the Roman candle, uh, yesterday's candle. Oh, I do, it went to the wrong chart. Let me do this, get there quickly. Don't want to run out of time. Uh, and have a great weekend, folks. I'll see you on Monday. Let me just do this. Yeah, look, no, that's not a Roman candle. The the body, the, the actual candle body, must be a half to three quarters 
above the wick low or the wick high if it's a reversal. So this is not, it could ever say some of the characteristics, but it's not, not a Chapman Wave Roman candle. So if the S&P closes, um, and now it's down eight. You remember it was up uh, big. It was up to 43.77. <clears throat> this is the area that says to me, within two days, if we fail at a peak A or a peak B in the Chapman Way with the, uh, uh, do I have time? Yes, I do. In the pattern that we look at all the time, over and over and over, the dreaded H, this comes down. If the arch fails at an A or a B, an A or a B, and then takes out the left side low. You've got to be careful. So as it rolls over, A and B, it rolls over. Uh, and this is the S&P. We've got to be real careful because the, the angle of descent starts to accelerate. As you can see, as it's coming down, it starts to accelerate. So all I'm going to say is be careful here. If you've got long positions, just put in fairly tight stops if they're trading positions. If they're core positions, then you deal with them. We'll see you on Monday. Give me a yell of the little bit.